Dean Bershani has a long history in academics. He was working in administration at Texas A&M when a pupil planted a seed in the teacher. One of my students, one of my best students, actually was the former vice president of the student body here. And during the middle of a conversation, middle of the class, she kind of tilted her head sideways and said, would you ever think of being the president of NDSU? And the truth is, I hadn't been here for 25 years. But uh, upon further review of the campus, the culture, and the history, something clicked. She had talked about NDSU so much that I went home and started doing some research and started falling in love with the place. Uh, it's a very exciting institution that has changed dramatically in the last decade and has phenomenal potentials. And uh, from there on in, it, the rest is history. It just became more and more intriguing to me. Uh, there's something about a college campus that the energy, the enthusiasm. He's now the president of the state's largest institution, which means many things. Number one in North Dakota right now is a thriving, that's right, thriving economy driven in large part by the oil wells of Western North Dakota. All this means NDSU has a chance to be part of something rather significant. It's a window of opportunity that, that has never existed for North Dakota in the past. And when the rest of the nation's economy starts floating back up, this is a known formula. Invest in higher education, invest in your research universities, and use those as economic engines for the state. Everyone else is gonna do what we have the opportunity to do right now in just a few years. So if we're going to reposition North Dakota and reposition the economy of the state, we need to get on it right now and get through that window of opportunity and take advantage of it while the rest of the nation is floundering around trying to find some sort of economic stability. All this comprehension from a man who never thought he would go to college. Growing up in California, he was destined to take over the family trucking business, but he decided on Humboldt State. You were the first one in your family to go to college. Yeah. Your dad expected you not to go to college to come back and run the trucking business. Yeah. College changed your life, and introduced you to a world that I never imagined. I, I was, I didn't know I had an option but to go back and work for my dad maybe own the trucking firm someday, maybe expand it, that, that would have been the dream of success. Sure. College made me realize that that was just one of countless options and that I could uh, do anything I wanted. That is more the goal than anything else. If you can help create a setting where students are inspired, the rest falls into place. For the individual, the institution, and ultimately the state. Well, certainly its history is as a land-grant institution supporting agriculture and extension service to the state. And, and in a largely rural agrarian state like North Dakota, that, that is a key element of its history, but also of its future. This is always going to be an agricultural state. At the same time, because of the economy in the rest of the country and the unique factors going on in North Dakota, we have the potential to expand and diversify the economy uh, in, in profound ways. NDSU has moved up its profile because of more than economy. The decision to go to Vision One has been a daunting and rewarding task. Taking a leap of faith, validating it beyond what they envisioned. It has been way above my expectations. I think it's done more for for all of our graduates, when we go someplace, well, the biggest question, Mike, and you'll laugh at this, but they'll say, well, we had, and you know our, our success. When we went to St. Cloud or Mankato, they said, well, we had, you know, four or 500 people at our tailgating parties, or we have things. When we go somewhere now, it's overwhelming. I mean, coming down to Minnesota, we, had, we thought we had 25,000 fans come around that game when we came down there. Irvinegar knows he's been on this campus for more than three decades. Coming in as a basketball coach, he's slated to retire soon, but with a unique perspective. And I would have loved to have been Division I. I mean, we were Division II back then, and uh, it was a great program, we a great conference, the NCC. But North Dakota State University should have been a Division I program. I've always felt that from a long, long time ago, Mike, so. Which brings us back to big picture as in where do athletics fit in a president's mission statement. From a man who worked at the University of North Carolina and saw the Duke-NC basketball rivalry and saw it up close. Oh, Duke, North Carolina. Bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the students go to those schools just so they can get tickets to the game. I mean, it's, so it's feel it. crazy, yeah. It might not reach those heights here, but make no mistake, a higher athletic profile has helped keep the big green front and center. People have tried to document this. People have gone to great lengths to see if winning programs create more money for an institution. What do you think? 
I have, I've never seen any compelling evidence that winning is what matters, it's being competitive. As long as people are excited about our chances on Saturday or the, the match on Friday or whatever, and, and a, the more broadly competitive you are, that's where giving increases because it gets people to campus, it keeps them engaged, it keeps them excited and feeling good about the university. He has a great balance about himself. He knows athletics is important, but he also knows, hey, academics is very, very, very important. He lives in a plush on-campus house by himself. Well, kind of. So you move into your new place, not bad digs. Yeah. What, what does the president's house do? I mean, because I mean, it's, it's more than a functional house. It's supposed to be a place where you bring people to get excited about North Dakota State. Well, exactly. It, it really is a reception center with a couple of hotel rooms upstairs. Um, and it's a phenomenal facility and asset that North Dakota got this wonderful facility without spending a dollar of taxpayer money on it. We're, we're able to run over 100 people a week through here on different events. And everyone that comes here is impressed by NDSU because they see this is the, the living room of the university. It's all part of what makes this campus and this experience so exciting right now. Like any college, it is filled with a sense of pure idealism. With the economy and the athletic program on the rise, there is a unique sense, and with a president who believes he has an obligation to the entire Bison student body. Every student walks by you has the potential to be somebody who's a world leader. You, you just don't get that in any other environment. It's intoxicating. How do you try to connect with the kids so you never lose that? Well, you know, it, it's fun to just walk with them. And, and you know, they'll be, hi, hi, they usually have earphones in or something. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they'll look up and go, President Brashani. What should that, that kid expect from North Dakota State? What, what, what is your role? What is it you're obligated to give them here? I think it's to show them what's possible. Uh, for me, I was coming from a rural area. I had, I thought I knew what the world was about and what my options were in life. I had no idea. And, and that's what a university should do and in a state particularly like North Dakota, I want it to flip the light switch on for them.